What's happening, Fish and Friends? Welcome to another episode. Today we are talking about the Wacky Rig. We're covering everything from hooks, rings, plastics, rods, reels, line, weighted versus weightless, when, where, how. Whew, we got a lot to cover. So let's start by talking about the rig itself. A Wacky Rig is really nothing more than a soft plastic worm. Usually it's going to be like a stick bait, a Senko type worm and then a hook. Now, I always use O-rings, and we're gonna talk about that more, but some sort of hook. And we're gonna go through all this in depth, but really, that's it. That's what you're tying on. It's a very non-threatening rig. It's just a worm that falls with a little subtle shimmy and shake on the way down, and it entices bass. It will draw bass. Uh, it's very finesse. It's not very intrusive. There's not much going on with it. It's just a little wiggling worm. The wacky rig, I guess some old boy somewhere probably put a hook in the middle of the worm and said, ha this is wacky, wonder if it catches anything. Then old boy ends up catching like a dozen bass that day and is like, I might be onto something and then tried to keep it secret, but it got out. So enough yapping out here. Let's go gather supplies and take a closer look at this. Okay, let's grab, oh, let's grab a couple of those. Need to grab some hooks. Let's see, weighted wacky, weedless Nico. These, not real sure about those, but we'll talk about them. Oh, and some O-rings, gotta have some O-rings. Oh, gotta have some stickos. Mm, oh, used to throw those, we'll show them. Oh, another different type. And yeah, why not, gotta have those. One last stop over here for something a little different. Yeah, let's just, let's grab both of these. All right, now that we've got all of our supplies gathered, let's talk about soft plastics. When it comes to soft plastics, I really use three main types of plastics for the wacky rig. Number one is going to be your regular stick bait type, just a you know a Senko style bait. This happens to be the uh, the Bass Pro Sticko. Great for the value. They sink really well. Good action. Great little stick bait there. So if you're looking for something affordable, you can find them on sale and such. Um, that type of style is number one. Now also with that, something that I like. You've heard me talk about them a ton. They don't pay me to say this. I love their stuff. That's Reaction Innovations. That's the old pocket rocket. Now, this is a five and a half inch worm, but you can see the ends of this are a little bit more bulbous. They kind of flare out. And in the middle, there's kind of a, a tiny spot. And that's perfect for Wacky Rig because you know exactly where it needs to go. I like the ridges on this, especially when this is Texas rigged. This has more of a wobble down, but even on the, the, uh, the Wacky Rig, it's just got a cool different look to it. Uh, they're a little bit bulkier, a little bit heavier too, so if you're casting these weightless, that might be something to consider. Okay, next going over to more of a trick worm style. This is the uh, the Bass Pro Finic, Finicky, Fin, I don't know how you say it, but it's a trick worm style worm, and really the, uh, the Jackal Flick Shake put this on the map. This kind of trick worm, slender looking worm style, and these you'll run with a weighted uh, wacky rig head. We'll talk about that here in a second, but just a different look. It doesn't have as much action on the fall. It doesn't really do anything. It just kind of goes down like this. But when you pop that, it's got a whole bunch of wavy action. So it looks just a little bit different. Um, I use both. A cool little bait to try. Something like that. If you don't have those, um, you can just use your regular, you know, trick worm, regular straight zoom type worm. Now third is a ring style bait. I really don't hear people talk about these very much at all, but um, I started out using these, the Lake Fork. It's like a, a ring fry looking deal. I forget, I think Strike King calls theirs the ring fry, but um, this ring style looking bait. Now since using theirs, I've actually switched because I always use rings on mine, um, and I've gone over to the Grande Bass Rattlesnake. Similar design here, you just saw me use this in a video not too long ago, but similar design, you can see when you put that on, they're a lot different. These ribs catch water, it's got kind of a different shimmy on the way down, but just a cool little different presentation, especially if everybody around is throwing a Senko, try something different. Now when it comes to the colors of your soft plastics, don't overcomplicate it. When I'm in clearer, cleaner water, I'm gonna go to a more natural translucent color. So something like this, Grande Bass calls that El Jefe, but it's more like a root beer or a light brown color. Something that's a little bit more see-through, it's got a little bit of flake in it, it looks natural. Then of course, a watermelon red flake. Awesome for clean water. Now moving on from there, as the water gets dirtier, I'm just gonna throw a straight green pumpkin. And no matter what plastic you use, if you're looking for only one carrot color to bring around with you, green pumpkins hands down is it. Did I just say pumpkins is in plural? Green pumpkin. That's because it works in clean water, dirtier water, and it still leaves a pretty darn good outline or a silhouette in really dirty, muddy water. So you can get away with it there too. So if I can only pick one, green pumpkin. And then finally in that stain to really dirty muddy water, I like to go with a dark color because it leaves a good silhouette. Kind of like just seeing a shadow of something. They can't really tell what color it is, but a black or really dark just makes a good shadow outline. So something like this, 
This is hematoma, it's like a black and blue, or like I showed you that stick bait first was a black with a blue flake and a blue tail. So something dark to make a good silhouette. Okay, the second part of the rig is the O-ring. I use an O-ring whenever I can get away with it because it makes your soft plastic last a lot longer. And what I mean by that is, I was showing you here, you can see how this hook is rigged by two plastic rings right there. That's actually what's holding the bait on that plastic, those two little round rubber rings. And let me show you here, they sell these wacky tools, they're pretty cheap, you can get them about anywhere now for a couple bucks, but these are nice because they hold your extra O-rings on there, and that's actually how you slip them on the soft plastic. This did not have any sort of O-rings on it, and as you can see there, I just put the hook directly through the plastic, and what happens is when that fish hits it, a lot of times it'll tear through that and you're done with the bait in one fish. So, it's really easy to do, you just take the head of your bait, put it up here in the little tool there, take two, now remember, two, pull it down on here, and I'm going to show you why, Take two of your O-rings, pull those down and put them in the middle of the soft plastic. I think that's about the middle. Looks about right to me. Slide them down in the plastic and that's it. Just like that. Now, I always make mine into an X shape when I put them on the hook and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So all you're going to do is take the hook point and grab that first little O-ring there. Get under it. Just like so. Can you see that there? I grabbed the first O-ring. I'm going to take my hook point, turn it around and grab this second ring that I went past. So I went through the first one. I'm going to come back around to the second one and grab it. Go around the outside of it, push it through right between those two and it makes an X. See that there? I'm coming right through that other one. So I'm going to go through just like that and when I get it on there it makes an X with those rings and that's what holds it on there so nice and neat. It crosses them over and it's going under both of them. So that's nice because it keeps the hook perpendicular to the lure just like that so when the fish grabs it that hook is there and ready as opposed to being parallel to the lure like this where it can get caught up and shoved in the plastic when you use just one ring, it's gonna look like that. Now I get asked a lot about specific sizes to the O-ring. These are what I've been using. These are the clear ones, the uh, Wacky Ring O-ring tool. And when you look at these on Tackle Warehouse, they give you different sizes. So when you go to a smaller size like this, this is a number nine, it works good for the little bit smaller stick baits like this. This is that Reaction Innovations Pocket Rocket and the four and a half inch. So it's a lot smaller in the middle or something like this, these Grande Bass Rattlesnakes, it's smaller in the middle. They sell different sizes of those, so be aware of that because if you have a real big one on the stick bait, there's a chance that it's gonna kinda slide and move. Okay, moving on to the hooks. When I first started out, um, I wanted to try to run my wacky rig weedless, but as I learned going on, if I'm gonna throw around wood and cover and such, I'm just gonna go to a Texas rig. I always throw my Texas rigs on a bait caster so I can go up to 15 pound, all the way up to 20 pound line if I need to with a larger, heavier wire hook. Now I started throwing these, these weedless wacky hooks when I first started. Unfortunately, the hookup ratio on these is not very good at all. I personally don't use them anymore for that reason. Um, I just miss a ton of bites. So I moved over upon recommendation, I couldn't even tell you where, but to these wacky rigs, they're actually a weedless Nico hook. Now these come in a weedless uh, or just the regular without the weedless. It's quote unquote weedless. It's just a couple of little pieces of stiff fluorocarbon there. It does help with grass and such, but if you're running it around wood, you're still going to get snagged. So be aware of that. Um, if you're throwing it around a bunch of wood and such, I would just go to a, a weightless Texas rig stick bait where you know for sure you can really rig that weedless. But um, the Nico hook is what I recommend, either a size one or a size one ot. And I thought I had one here. Oh, it's the one I was just using there. That is a size one aught. So you can see they're not too big, not too small. Um, a size one is just a little bit smaller. So find what you like, but I think a size one or one aught's perfect. And then of course, when you're running a soft plastic that doesn't have as much salt, like as I was saying, those rattlesnakes, they're not super salty. They're almost more of a floating soft plastic. So I always run those with a weighted wacky rig head. Um, 1 16th or 1 8th is my favorite. There's all kinds of styles out there. BMC, um, I think this is actually an Arky head I got for Walmart. They sell them there pretty cheap. All kinds of different ones out there. They do have the little wire guard on it. So again, a little bit of weedless, but it's not gonna save you from everything. So comment below, if you have a, a wacky hook that's actually really weedless, something better than that, comment below and let me know. I haven't found one. Um, I found the, the BMC Nico hooks to be the absolute best. Hookup ratio is good on them. I've never had a hook breaking problem, so. If you found something else different that you really like, comment below and let me know. Okay, let's jump over and talk about the setup that I fish my wacky rig on. Now, to me, a wacky rig stick bait is more of a finesse version of like a regular Texas rig stick bait. It's got more wiggle. I'll generally go down to a little bit smaller stick bait, like a four and a half inch, when I'm trying to get really finesse, and I always fish them on spinning tackle for that reason. 
I'm using a lighter wire hook, a little bit lighter line. Great for those places that are extremely pressured or if you've got, you know, real clear water where you think the fish can really get a good look at line, going to finesse helps. So overall, my favorite rod to run is a seven-ish foot medium power spinning rod. It's gonna be just your regular medium power fast action. That's gonna do great for all your wacky rig, shaky head. It's just a very good all-purpose rod. So that's what I run for my wacky rigs. Grab the reel of your choice. This happens to be a, a loose speed spin. It's like a $59 reel, but I like a 3000 size. The bale's just a little bit bigger. You can bring in a little bit more line in case that fish runs at you. So um, with these type of reels, a lot of them are gonna say the same speed, but the bigger, um, did I say bale? I'm sorry, the bigger spool you have, the more line it's gonna hold, it's actually gonna take in more line. So you have to remember with the wacky rig, you're working the rig with your rod, not the reel. The reel's just taking up slack line. So I like a 3000 size. You pick what's comfortable to you. I always run at 10 to 15 pound braid. Generally, it's gonna be 15 pound for me. 10 to 15 pound braid to a fluorocarbon leader. That's important because fluorocarbon sinks, so it's gonna help bring that lure down. If you use mono or just straight braid, it's gonna fall a lot slower. So fluorocarbon leader, and when I tie my leader up, um, I personally use the Alberto knot. It's my favorite. Just make sure that when you rig up your knot and tie up your lure like you're gonna cast it, that your knot right there, make sure your knot does not go down into the spool of your spinning reel. It can get caught in stuff, it can hang up, so just make sure your, uh, your connection braid to lead or knot is between your reel and that first guide. That's where I like to have it. So it's about six, seven-ish foot of fluorocarbon leader. All right, let's get into the when, where, and how. When do I throw a wacky rig? Well, let me sit down. Let me get up here and get more comfortable. So when do I throw a wacky rig? Well, if we're talking about time of year, it's honestly one of those things you can throw almost the whole year. At the beginning of the year, when those fish are coming up for pre-spawn, you can certainly throw it up there around them in the shallows. A lot of guys use it as a bed fishing bait, so when they actually are spawning, they're on beds, guys will use it that way. My personal favorite is once you get into the summer months, especially as the summer drags on, weather gets hot, water gets hot, those fish get kind of lethargic, and they're gonna be up close to cover, right? You get those really sunny days and the fish just aren't crazy active. So throwing the wacky rig around really high percentage spots, you know, under docks next to a log, Anywhere where you think a fish might be hiding to ambush that is a perfect time to throw it. It's great when you've got spots that are really pressured, um, like I said, clear water. So there's a ton of times, even right now, as it's going into fall, fall transition is a great time to throw the wacky rig. Those fish have been pressured all year. They're kind of in that weird category where they're all spread out. It's just, it's strange fishing. And even into fall, as the water gets colder, me and my buddy, I think a couple years ago that was, Matt and I were arguing about it. He's like, dude, I still throw a stick bait all the way up till it's super cold. I'm like, no. I had a challenge with swim baits, which is why I said we catch more fish versus stick baits and the stick bait caught more. So there's never a bad time to really throw it. Get out there, fish it, find where it works best for you and your waters. Next up is the where. Where do I throw a wacky rig? Well, for me, it's kind of a spot target lure. So high percentage spots, specific targets, that's where I'm gonna throw the wacky rig. It's not something like a spinner bait or a crank bait where I'm trying to cast to as many different spots as I can and just cover a bunch of water. So what I mean by high percentage spots is like I was saying, skipping it up under docks. As that sun come out, docks are gonna be a good spot. Actually, Gary Klein, that's been an MLF, gosh, was that last year? A Summit Cup, I wanna say, but Gary Klein and I think it was Mike Iconelli uh, were in a northern lake throwing, it was the General, the Berkeley General, uh, just a regular stick bait, long cast at those floating docks that they have out there. We don't really have them here in Iowa, but as you go up into Michigan, Minnesota, um, and even East, they'll have those little floating docks out there, right? Isolated cover, um, especially when they're in front of like a, a mouth of an inlet, you know, different spots off points, but they were having luck throwing at those isolated targets. So anytime you see something isolated, like for me around here, isolated, brush or bushes or an isolated log or a tree stump, those are always good spots to hold at least one bass. So you hear me all the time say, see wood, pitch to wood, bounce a couple times. That's why you get on those little isolated spots. It's a great high percentage spot to find bass. You know, it might be a one little boulder clump or transitions in the bank when it goes from a whole bunch of reeds to grass. Right on the other edge of those reeds is a good spot or a whole bunch of rock and it goes to sand right on those transitions in the bank, those are high percentage spots to look. Of course, around here we have a ton of grass. So one of the only spots that I'll kind of work at a little bit more, and I'll talk about that here in a second, is grass lines. 
We have a ton of grass lines through the year, a great spot. Um, you know, if you have a drop off right by a grass line, that little kind of funnel in there is such a good spot. Work it all up along that grass line and find spots where it's different, where there's like a little inlet or a little spot that sticks out more. Grass lines are a good spot as well. Now, how do I work a wacky worm? Well, the big thing with the wacky worm is all of its power, its drawing power, its, I don't know, magicalness. Is that even a word? I don't know. The power behind the wacky worm is the fall. So most of the time, I would say nine out of 10 times, I'm gonna get bit when it's on the fall, maybe eight out of 10, sometimes when it's sitting on the bottom. But most of the time, it's gonna be on that initial pitch, that initial throw in. So you wanna make sure you're getting a good distance, not getting right up on top of them and dropping it getting a good distance so those fish can't see you, a good gentle uh, pitch or you know cast so it's not super loud hitting the water, and just let it fall on slack line. And what I mean is, as soon as you throw that out, let a little bit of line out, let it fall unhindered, it's just gonna kinda wiggle all the way down, and that's what you want. You don't wanna throw it out and have it wiggling and then start reeling in, it does some crazy stuff, that's gonna scare the fish off. Throw it out, let it fall on slack line, don't touch it. And once that lure hits the bottom, I'll usually let it sit there for a couple seconds, that's usually the other time they'll grab it is when it's just sitting there and I'll go to pop it and I'll feel a weight on there, set that hook. Now, if I don't get a bite on that initial fall when it hits, I'm gonna pop it three times, just three quick little pops with my rod tip and then do it all over again. Remember, it's the fall that's getting them to bite. So pop, 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 let it fall down. It's gonna take a few seconds. And then I'll pop, 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 let it go again, fall. And usually after those first three rotations, the initial fall, pop, 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 falls again, pop, 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 falls again. If I don't get anything by then, I'm gonna reel it in and go to another target. So if that's a big bush, I might try the back of it, the front of it, both sides, a few different pitches to it, and oftentimes that does make the difference. So just because you have one isolated target, don't just throw it at once. If it looks fishy, there's probably a fish there. If you're uh, just hitting good targets like that once and going on, there's a good chance you're missing fish. So. If it looks fishy, fish it. I think that was from the, the Yo Dizzle, Rand Dizzle's Yoda quote. If it looks fishy, fish it. I agree. Now the next big tip on how I work is don't overwork the wacky rig. And I kind of talked on that earlier, but I see a lot of guys throwing it out there and they've let it fall for a couple seconds and they're popping it, reeling it, popping it. Let it fall. I can't stress that enough. This isn't one of those baits where you're going to throw it out there and be working it like a jerk bait or doing a whole bunch of action. Like I said, the success of this lure is throwing it out and doing nothing, just letting it fall. That's why it's good for new people. You don't have any sort of cadence. You don't have any type of topwater walking. It's just throw it out and let it sink. Now, like I said, the only time where I'm a little bit different on that when I'm working a grass edge where I think there might be a few good spots, I'll throw it down that grass edge and work it kind of all the way back, pop, pop, pop. And I've had a lot of success doing it that way too. It's just kind of covering water. And oftentimes I'll do that with that weighted wacky, wacky rig. You can almost fish it more like a power finesse. You can fish it a little bit faster because it's falling faster as opposed to just like a regular stick bait. You throw it out there and it takes a little while to fall. So that is one time I'll use the weighted wacky rig. You can kind of cover water and fish it a little bit quicker like that flick shake. That's where I like that type. Tip number three is make sure you are watching your line. This is another reason I like to use braid to a leader so I can see my line. Like I said on most of those hits it's going to happen on the way down so you're not going to feel a grab and run away all the time. It does happen, but a lot of times you're just going to see a quick, as your line's floating down, you're just going to see a quick boom, a quick kind of run of it, um, or as it's getting down and kind of making some slack, you'll see your line just moving to the side. Either of those things happen, set your hook. And for me, because this is a light wire hook, like I showed you there, it's not a thick hook. It's a very small little light wire hook there, easy to bend out. When I set the hook on this, I'm just going to reel up my slack and pull into it. So it's not like a jig or a frog hook set where I'm reeling down and swinging for the fences. I'm just gonna reel all the slack down and pull straight up. Those light wire hooks, they're like needles. Those will go through easy. So you don't have to really reel down and swing as hard as you can. Remember, you're using light line. That leader is gonna be anywhere from eight to 12 pound fluorocarbon leader. You don't wanna swing super hard and put stress on that knot. So just reel it down and pull up into it. Kind of like a Ned rig. So overall, as long as you have the right gear, the right setup, the Wacky Rig is such a fun rig to use. It's great for beginners. You look at guys on tour, they're throwing this. This isn't just something that some guy off the street, some brand new guy should throw. Everybody throws it. It catches fish. It catches big fish. Um, some days it catches a ton of small fish. You're going to see a day coming up where I caught over 30 some fish on this exact rig right here from the old aluminum kayak. It was a ton of fun. So. If you've not thrown the Wacky Rig, if you haven't given it much of a chance, give it a try. Like I said, kind of sparse cover, 
Um, if it gets real thick, real crazy, I'll go over to just the regular Texas rig stick bait, but man, this thing will catch them. All right, fishing friends, that's gonna do it for me tonight. Comment below and let me know what your favorite wacky rig setup is. Is there a specific lure, a specific hook, anything that differs from mine, or if you agree with anything I said, comment below and let me know. I appreciate that a ton. Now tonight, subscribe, Fish and Friends. Shout out goes to my guy, Bobby Roast Beef. He actually runs the Jigs and Bigs podcast. If you didn't see me share that on my Instagram story a while back, he had me on his podcast. It was a ton of fun. Super nice guy. Go check out the Jigs and Bigs podcast. Great guy. We talked fishing. It was a lot of fun. So go check him out. Give him some support. Did I just say some more? And speaking of support, thank you everybody else that continues to watch and support my channel. It means a bunch to me. But that's it for me. Coming to you from the old aluminum kayak out here. I've got to go in and edit. So thank you all for watching. And until next time. Mm -hmm.